All right, so in this video, we're going to derive the quadratic formula. So this is one that's pretty easy overall, something that you would probably do in an Algebra 1 course. So we're just going to start with ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. So a, which is the coefficient for x squared, cannot be equal to zero. Now the quadratic formula, this is what we're going to derive. So we're going to say that the solutions for this equation, x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So like I said earlier, this is pretty easy to do. So we have ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So our goal is actually to create a perfect square trinomial on the left side. That way we can get a binomial squared. Then we can use the square root property. So in case you don't know what a perfect square trinomial is, if you have something like, let's say x squared plus 4x plus 4, this is a perfect square trinomial because it factors into a binomial squared. This factors into x plus 2, which is a binomial quantity squared. So that's what we're trying to create. So that's what completing the square does. So the first step is to move all your variable terms to one side and your constants to the other. Well, this is a variable term and this is a variable term and this is gonna be a constant. So I'm just gonna subtract C away from each side of the equation. So this is going to cancel. So then what I have is AX squared plus BX is equal to negative C. Now, when you complete the square, you want the coefficient for X squared to be one. Earlier we said that a cannot be zero, but it could be one, it could be five, it could be three trillion. So to make sure that it's one, what we're going to do is divide everything here by a, just so we know that the coefficient of x squared is one. So coming down, we would get this canceling, and let's say that we have x squared plus b over a times x, and this is equal to negative c over a. Now here comes the tricky part. So we're going to complete the square. Again, we're creating a perfect square trinomial on the left. So to do that, you're going to take your coefficient for x to the first power. You're going to cut it in half, and then you're going to square it. I'm actually going to do this on a separate page. So I'm going to put b over a, and we're going to cut it in half. So we're going to multiply by half and then square it. If you just keep repeating cut it in half and square it, you'll never forget how to complete the square. So this one right here is going to turn into b times 1, which is b, over a times 2, which is 2a. And this is squared. And this becomes b squared over 2 squared would be 4. And then a squared is just a squared. This right here, this b over 2a, that was created by taking b over a, the coefficient of x to the first power, and multiplying it by a half. You need that value. So I'm going to write b over a times 1 half being equal to b over 2a. This right here, you would box this off and say, you need that for factoring. So for factoring, whenever you set up completing the square, just use that value when you're factoring. And whatever the sign is, you take that with you. So when we factor this into a binomial squared, you're going to have x plus this b over 2a quantity squared. This guy right here, this b squared over 4a squared, this is what you need to actually complete the square. So let me come down here and let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to have x squared plus b over a times x. And then I'm going to add that b squared over 4a squared. And then this is going to be equal to negative c over a. Now, to make this legal, I can't just go around adding things to one side of the equation without doing it to the other side. So I'm going to also add b squared over 4a squared. So this got added over here. And then to compensate, I added it over here as well. So I didn't do anything illegal. So now what we have is a perfect square trinomial on the left. And again, I just go back to, this is going to factor into x plus, again, take this and cut it in half, b over a times one half is b over 2a. That's what you're going to use. So b over 2a. And this is quantity squared. Now, you can stop and check this if you want. If you use your formula, this is the first guy squared, so x squared, and then plus two times this guy times this guy. And of course, this would cancel with this, and you're back to your b over a times x. So this is b over a times x. And then plus this last guy squared. Well, this is b squared over 2 squared, which is 4, times a squared. That's it. So you're right back to this right here. So again, if you ever get lost by that, just think about what did I do when I was completing the square? Take this coefficient right here, 4 x raised to the first power, and cut it in half. And that's what you're going to use when you're factoring. When we come on this side, really all we have to do is get a common denominator. So this is negative c over a. And if I look at this, the denominator is 4a squared. So I'm missing one factor of a and I'm missing a 4. So I need to multiply this by, let me do this in a different color, 4a over 4a, which again is just 1. So let's say then plus, we have b squared over 4a squared. And let's come down and say this is the quantity x plus b over 2a. 
quantity squared, and this equals, I'm gonna rearrange this just because of the way the formula is. So this is b squared, and then this would be negative 4ac, so let's write minus 4ac, and you'd have a common denominator of 4a squared, so 4a squared. And here's where I'm just going to take the square root of each side. Don't forget, because this guy is squared right here, you want your plus or minus, and then take the square root of that. So we'll say that this would cancel with this, and you have x plus b over 2a is equal to Again, don't forget your plus or minus. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that, that's very important. So this right here would be, you can break this up into the square root of b squared minus 4ac over the square root, let's just say the square root of four times the square root of a squared. So you could say the square root of 4a squared, but I wanna break it up because this one right here causes some issues when you're deriving this. So let me come down here and just say that this is x plus b over 2a, and this equals plus or minus, again, we have the square root of b squared minus 4ac, not really gonna do anything with that, over. The square root of four is two. Now here's where you get a little bit of an issue. The square root of a squared is actually the absolute value of a. So we'll put times the absolute value of a. We're gonna drop those absolute value bars in a moment. I'm gonna go down here and just explain what's going on with this. So if you look at the absolute value of a, what is this equal to? Well, it's equal to a itself if a is greater than or equal to zero. And I know in this case that A can't be zero, but we're just talking about a general case in this scenario. And then it would be, let me make this a little bit bigger. So the negative of A, if A is less than zero. So as an example, if I had the absolute value of three, well, that's just equal to three. So here, the absolute value of A is just equal to A if A is greater than or equal to zero. You can just drop the absolute value bars. But the absolute value of negative three is equal to what? Well, it's equal to positive three. So how do I change this? Well, I wanna put a negative out in front of whatever A is. Well, A is negative three. So it's the negative of negative three, which is positive three. So coming back, if A was greater than zero, well, then you could just drop the absolute value bars and you would have two A. If A was less than zero, well, then you would have negative 2a. But you don't really need to do that because you have this plus or minus already right there. So you can just drop the absolute value bars and say it's just 2a. So now what we're gonna do is finish things up. We're just gonna subtract b over 2a away from each side of the equation. And I'm going to rearrange it to where it matches. So this would cancel. And let's say that x is equal to, we have, I'm gonna put this out in front. So negative b over 2a and then plus or minus, we have the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You have a common denominator, so you have 2a there and 2a there. So to finish things up, let's just say that x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That's your quadratic formula. All right, let me give you one example here. So this is gonna be a quadratic equation that we're gonna solve using factoring, completing the square, and then also the quadratic formula. So let's start with factoring. That's usually the easiest approach. You're not gonna be able to use that every time, but let's go ahead and set this up. And if we have something like six as the coefficient for x squared, well, that could come from one times six or two times three. Now, one times six is not going to work. I'm just gonna tell you that in advance. So it's gonna be two times three. So let's put two x here and three x here. Now we know that this sign is negative and this sign is positive. So that means this is negative and this is negative because a negative plus a negative gives me a negative and a negative times a negative gives me a positive. Now, in terms of what goes right here and right here, think about the factors of 35. Again, just think about the positive factors because we already know that it's going to be negative in each case. So 35, you have one times 35 and then you have five times seven. So let's go with five and seven. And if you put a seven here and a five here, well, the outer is gonna be negative 10x and the inner is gonna be negative 21x. Well, negative 10x plus negative 21x, that's negative 31x. And of course, negative seven times negative five, that's positive 35. So this is the correct factorization. So once you have it factored, again, you can just use your zero product property. So all we have to do is take each factor with a variable, which this one has one and this one has one, set it equal to zero and solve. So you have two x minus seven equals zero or three x minus five equals zero. Let's add seven to both sides of the equation. This would cancel and you're going to get 2x is equal to seven. We will divide both sides of the equation by two. This cancels and you get x is equal to seven halves. Over here, we're gonna add five to both sides of the equation. This cancels. We're going to get three x is equal to five. Divide both sides of the equation by three. Let me fix this. So this cancels and we get x equals five thirds. So let me just put five thirds like that. So your solutions here, you have x equals seven halves or x equals five thirds. So let me get rid of this. 
and I'll show you that we get the same thing using completing the square and also the quadratic formula. So completing the square, again, you wanna take your variable terms and have them on one side. So 6x squared minus 31x. So I'm gonna subtract 35 away from each side. So I'm gonna go equals negative 35. Then what I wanna do is I wanna take and divide everything by six because I want the coefficient of x squared to be one. So I'm going to divide this by six, this by six, and this by six. So this is gonna cancel and you're gonna have x squared minus 31 over six times x is equal to negative 35 over six. Okay, so now we get into completing the square. What do we do? We're taking the coefficient of our variable raised to the first power. So that's negative 31 over six. Make sure to take the sign with you. So negative 31 over six, cut it in half, so we're multiplying it by half, and then we're gonna square it. So this equals negative 31 over six times two is 12, and this guy right here would be squared. Now, this number before it's squared, again, you're gonna use that when you factor. So keep that in mind. Let me just highlight that because we need that in a moment. So this is gonna end up being negative 31 squared would be positive 961, and this is over 12 squared is 140. Let me erase some stuff here and let me move this out of the way. So we need that and we also need this. Let me slide down. So this is the number we need to complete the square. So let's say that we have x squared minus 31 over six times x and then plus this 961 over 144 is equal to negative 35 over six plus 961 over 144. Let me fix this five. And then this number right here, Again, that comes from us taking this negative 31 over six and multiplying it by a half. This is what we need to factor into a binomial squared. So we'll have x minus 31 over 12, quantity squared, and move this down, is equal to, so for this one, I would multiply this by 24 over 24. Let me say negative 35 over six times 24 over 24. And negative 35 times 24 is negative 840. So this is negative 840 plus 961 over the common denominator of 144. So this, I'll just simplify it now. It's gonna be 121. So I'm just going to erase this and put 121 here like that. Again, we can take the square root of each side. So square root of this side and then plus or minus the square root of this side. So you're going to have, again, this would cancel with this, x minus 31 over 12 is equal to plus or minus. The square root of 121 is 11 over the square root of 144, well, that's 12. So this would end up being x minus 31 over 12 is equal to, you have plus or minus, again, square root of 121 is 11, over square root of 144, that is 12. So let's add 31 over 12 to both sides of the equation. This would cancel, and we're gonna get x is equal to, we have plus or minus 11 twelfths, and then plus 31 over 12. So you have two scenarios. The first scenario is that x is equal to 11 over 12 plus 31 over 12. So this equals what? What is 11 plus 31? That's 42. And what is 42 over 12? Well, there's a common factor of six. So this is six times seven over six times two. And if you cancel it, you get seven halves. So we found that earlier. So one solution is going to be x equals seven halves. Another solution, is x equals negative 11 over 12 plus 31 over 12. And then 31, you could say minus 11, that's going to be 20. So this would be 20 over 12. Let me slide this all over like that. So this would be, let's see, 20, let's say that's five times four over 12. Let's write that as three times four. Let's cancel a common factor of four. So that's five thirds. So the other answer is x is equal to five thirds. And again, that's exactly what we found earlier. All right, last method would be the quadratic formula. So this is probably going to be the easiest one in this case. So this is a, the coefficient of x squared. This is b, the coefficient of x to the first power. Always go plus negative so you can take the sign. And this is c, your constant. So x is equal to the negative of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 a. So you're just going to plug in. What is b that's negative 31? Now be very, very careful. This is the negative of b. b is a negative number, so this is the negative of negative 31. Don't just put negative 31 there, that would be wrong. So the negative of negative 31 is what you want. And then you have b squared. So this is negative 31 being squared. What I always do is go plus negative 4, 
just to make that clear, a is 6, and then times c, c is 35. Then down here you have 2 times a, and again a is going to be 6. Okay, so let's simplify this. So the negative of negative 31, that is going to be positive 31, and then plus or minus the square root of negative 31 squared, that's going to be 961, and then negative 4 times 6 times 35, that's going to be negative 840, so minus 840, and this is all over 2 times 6, which is 12. So this equals 31 plus or minus 961 minus 840, that is 121, so this is the square root of 121, again this is all over 12. So at this point, I'm going to split this up. Again, because we have that plus or minus there. So let's just say that x is equal to, let's go with 31 plus the square root of 121 over 12. Then we'll say or, we'll have x is equal to 31, and then you have the minus the square root of 121 over 12. So let me slide down here. So this one, again, would be equal to, we know that the square root of 121 is 11, so you could just erase that and put 11 here, and then also put that here. So we have 31 plus 11, which we know is 42 over 12. So 42 over 12, again, we saw this earlier, you can cancel a common factor of 6 between the numerator and the denominator, so 42 divided by 6 is 7, and 12 divided by 6 is going to be 2, so this is 7 halves. So our x equals 7 halves that we found earlier. And then this one down here, let's say 31 minus 11, that's going to be 20. And this is over 12. And of course, you can cancel a common factor of 4 between the numerator and denominator. So if I divide 20 by 4, I get 5. And if I divide 12 by 4, I get 3. So again, you get your x equals 5 thirds. Let me actually erase this. And I'll just put a comma here. So I'll say x equals 7 halves or 5 thirds. So again, we found that solving the same quadratic equation using factoring, completing the square and the quadratic formula gives us the same solutions each time. So x equals 7 halves or 5 thirds. In this particular situation, I think that probably factoring in the quadratic formula would be about the same amount of time and completing the square because we had some messy fractions would take the longest.